Hey guys, welcome to a new movie review. Today I'm going to be talking about um, a film that's mostly about Fred Rogers, but also about um, somebody who got to interview him back when he was alive. Um, and that's the film A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. This film is based off of a true story about journalists named Lloyd Vogel, who uh, I believe worked for Esquire magazine, if I'm not mistaken. And he is in charge of interviewing Fred Rogers for an article that they want to do about real life heroes. And since um, Fred Rogers' show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, was such a big deal at the time, um, they really wanted him to interview Fred Rogers. And since he welcomed a child into his life with his wife, um, they figured that he was kind of the perfect candidate for the journalists they had to go out and interview Fred Rogers. Uh, so upon interviewing him, uh, Fred Rogers notices right away that there's something kind of wrong with Lloyd, that there's some problems in his life that he hasn't quite resolved yet, which is true. Um, we learned right away that Lloyd has had troubles with his dad, and um, his mom passed away in a very tragic way when he was young. Um, he doesn't like going to hospitals as a result because it was so tragic, and the dad really wasn't there when the mom was um, really not feeling good and really had to go to the hospital a lot and was basically on her deathbed and um, the dad just really wasn't there for them and you can tell it, it's hurt Lloyd and his family over the years. So there's a lot of issues with him. He's still kind of adapting to being a dad. He's not quite used to that yet. Um, he's kind of gets short with people. He kind of has to have his way with things and so there's just a lot of issues he has that Fred Rogers notices right away about him. So throughout the course of the film not only is Lloyd learning about Fred Rogers, learning about kind of his special techniques that he has that kind of relaxes people and teaches them to be more positive with things. And, you know, obviously with Fred Rogers being a person himself, he even admits right away to Lloyd that there's things about him becoming a father and things like that that weren't perfect either. And um, he really didn't kind of put his kids in the spotlight or on his show just because he wanted them to live their lives. And the Mr. Rogers show was kind of his thing and he didn't want to have to force his kids into it and stuff like that. So there's a lot of interesting things that happen in this movie. Uh, but for the most part, it's about Lloyd Vogel and um, Fred Rogers kind of learning from each other uh, about Lloyd Vogel kind of living his life to the fullest thanks to Fred Rogers and kind of getting his life back on track and things like that. So throughout the course of this film, that's really what it's about is this friendship between Lloyd Vogel and Fred Rogers and kind of how that has impacted and inspired each other over the course of each other's lives. So overall, guys, I like this film a lot. I think this is a wonderful movie. Uh, for those who ever got around to seeing uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, the documentary about Fred Rogers, which I think was one or two years ago, I think. One year ago, I want to I want to say. But um, I actually think this film is better than this that movie. I, I really liked Won't You Be My Neighbor. I thought it's a great documentary about Fred Rogers and his impact on society and how there was things on his show that he covered that were very... Um, that you would never see on a kid's show ever covered. Like you would never see suicide or uh, racism or any of that kind of stuff covered on his show and how he did it in a very brave, appropriate manner and things like that. Um, but I think this film in particular, I think this film shows the impact on Fred Rogers, just how meeting him alone is just so, it's so different. It's just so unique and special and happy and optimistic. And it, there, he it really was the one and only kind of person in this of this kind. He really was kind of the only person who had this kind of power on people and things like that. And so I think this film displays this beautifully. So let's go over the why of the positives and negatives of this film for me are definitely more so positive than more so negative. So for my positives of this movie though, um, I like how this film plays out like an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It's even structured like one. We get to see the classic intro right away in the movie. Um, it even feels like a, um, like an episode of his show. It's, it's even kind of filmed with 90s cameras and filters to make it look like we're watching something out of like the early 90s or late 80s or something like that. Um, he, you know, teaches us lessons. He introduces Lloyd Vogel in a way that he probably would have on his show and things like that. Um, so I like how it's structured like that. And I also like all the transitions that they use in this movie. It's definitely the most unique use of transitions. It's not just a person getting into a car, driving to a different city. They really do make it look like you're watching an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood of a little car driving through a street or driving to a funeral or driving to um, or getting on a plane somewhere and the plane makes noises as it goes up and things like that. So they really made it feel like you're watching an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So we really got to give credit to Morel Heller who directed this movie. She really made this film feel like an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and I think that's a very interesting 
fun and appropriate way to make a movie about Fred Rogers also. Um, I also like the film's color palette. Like I said, it's a very bright, colorful movie. Uh, when you're on the set of the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood show, his, his sweater stands out, his red sweater. Uh, the light blue color on the wall stands out. The, um, the drapes on the windows and all that. It basically looks like you're watching an episode of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. And throughout this movie, they definitely keep a colorful color palette. Um, and even when the film kind of goes in darker places, the color palette still kind of displays those darker moments in interesting ways too. So I like the color palette choices that they use in this movie. But going into Merrell Heller again, I think she was the perfect choice to direct this movie. You can definitely tell she loved the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood show, just loved the impact Fred Rogers had on people. Um, I think I'll get to this compliment here in a minute, but um, you could definitely tell she liked how the story focused on a broken character with Lloyd Vogel. Um, so I think all these choices are things that Morel Heller was the perfect choice for for directing this movie. She really um, had the right kind of impact and positivity and color palette and just directorial style that fits for a story like this. So I thought she was a perfect directing choice for this movie. Um, and Tom Hanks as Fred Rogers, he nailed it. I mean, let's just face it, Tom Hanks can play any character that you assign to him and he will perfect it in some way somehow but he really did feel like Fred Rogers here and I guess to really display this there's an end credit scene with Fred Rogers so don't leave when the credits are rolling they actually do show an end credit scene in this movie too um, of the actual Fred Rogers and something he was doing on the show and things like that and it really goes to show just how much he perfected it how he watched his mannerisms and how he talked to people and he really kind of watched everything going into this role of how Fred Rogers was on people and things like that. So Tom Hanks as Fred Rogers was a perfect casting choice. Um, I also like how the film is about Mr. Rogers helping a broken character. Um, there is some complaints already about, oh, the film's hard to follow because we're uh, centering around this guy we're not supposed to like, and he's just not likable and things like that. But I actually will defend Morel Heller's choice in just the overall article that this movie was centered on that really was written for Esquire. Um, I think if they made this movie about a character who was never broken, who was a perfect person that Mr. Rogers was helping, it wouldn't have been for a very interesting movie because there wasn't there wouldn't, wouldn't be a lot of obstacles to get over, really. So I like how this film really is about Mr. Rogers helping a broken person get over a problem because if it was about somebody who wasn't broken, it wouldn't be as interesting of a film. And I do like how I mentioned earlier with the color palette. This film's also made with... Um, 90s TV cameras so there's a lot of shots here where you look like it looks like you're watching like you're in a TV studio somewhere watching a 90s show being filmed uh, so they make it look like you're watching something out of the 90s and things like that so I like the choices of camera uses in this movie and the actual cameras that they filmed with so I liked all those choices they made over the course of this movie. For my negatives, though, of Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, I felt personally that some of the darker moments in the movie, because like I said, it does cover some darker things like child abuse and um, this father being drunk and this father cheating on the wife and things like that that Lloyd went through with his family. But um, some of the darker moments to me, I felt like they didn't fit the tone of the movie. I felt like when they went dark, they almost went too dark. There's even some moments here where it almost feels like something out of like a rated R psychological thriller in certain scenes and I don't know if Morel Heller intended it to feel that dark uh, but she did direct um, Can You Ever Forgive Me last year with um, Melissa McCarthy which also went in some really dark directions so she's definitely not afraid of stepping into darker territory but one thing I thought that kind of interfered a little bit with this movie that worked well in Can You Ever Forgive Me was when the film goes dark it almost goes too dark and almost kind of ruins the tone of the movie a little bit so I thought when the film does go in darker places maybe keep the tone back a little bit more because this is a PG movie but when they go into those darker places it almost feels like an R-rated movie so um, I thought some of those darker moments didn't quite fit the tone of this movie overall. Um, also, the subplot with uh, Chris Cooper playing this like mean dad that Lloyd Vogel had, it's fine if you want to center on it for a little bit, but I felt like the subplot they used in this movie just went on forever and ever and ever and ever. It even got to the point where I had to remind myself I was watching a Fred Rogers movie. So there is a lot of time spent, unfortunately, with Lloyd and the dad kind of 
coming to terms with each other. Yes, they fight, and yes, they have disagreements that go into dark places and things like that. Uh, but I thought that subplot went on for a little bit too long. Uh, I think they could have scaled that back a little bit longer and just had more scenes with Fred Rogers and Lloyd kind of working things out and things like that. So the mean dad subplot, I understand why it's there. I personally thought it went on for a little longer than it should have. And overall, I do feel the film would have benefited with more scenes with Fred Rogers because you do have Tom Hanks playing him. You do have excellent scenes where um, he's teaching Lloyd things or you see him like working with kids or meeting with people out in public and doing all these things you would love to see Fred Rogers doing back when he was alive and things like that. Um, there's even like a small scene where he's like at a pool just kind of thinking to himself and praying and things like that. Um, so more scenes with Fred Rogers I think would have benefited this movie. This film's even marketed as a Fred Rogers movie. Uh, but like I said, certain scenes with like the mean dad subplot and going into darker places do kind of interfere with that a little bit. But there's just so many great things about the movie, like um, the structuring, like a Mr. Rogers Neighborhood episode, the film's color palette, uh, Tom Hanks playing Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers helping a broken lead character, and being filmed with old 90s TV cameras, I think helps this film a lot. So I'm going to give A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood a 9 out of 10. I think it's an excellent movie. I think it is possibly one of the best films of 2019. Not the very best one, but one of the best. It'll probably be in my top 10 at the end of the year, most likely. Um... Just so many great things about it. that It's just directed so beautifully, and it has so many beautiful things to say about Fred Rogers and his effect on people and how he impacted everybody and things like that. Like I said, a couple of little negative things about it, but 9 out of 10. Highly recommend A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Make sure you see this film, whether you are a fan of Fred Rogers or not.